Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today we'll be talking about what is the Miller's classification of gingival recession? How did he classify it? We have four classifications and we will speak about also about the etiology behind it and the treatment. But before we continue, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for more and more videos. Now, maybe you have noticed that your gums are going down or in other words, receding. So this is what I mean by gum recession. As you can see in the picture or in the circle, that this is a receding gum in comparison with the other teeth. You can see that there is, the gingiva basically is normal and it is covering up the tooth perfectly. But in this tooth, which is 2-1, you can see that the gum is receding down. This is what I mean by gum recession. So we have four types of uh, receding gums or gum recession that Miller classified them and we will speak about them in details but before that what is the etiology we need to know what is the cause behind the receding gum number one is the age the elderly patients they are more prone to have receding gums than the young patients why is that because the elderly patients, they will tend to have a poor oral hygiene in comparison with the young patient, even if you are brushing your teeth good and etc. But because when we become uh, old, the, saliva, the salivary glands will produce less saliva. And you know that the saliva, the importance of saliva is that it will prevent dental caries to take place so it will keep nourishing your oral cavity or it will lubricate your oral cavity but as we age the salivary glands will produce less saliva so you have more chances to develop dental caries so at the same time you will end up having receding gums because of dental caries another thing faulty tooth brushing technique which is incorrect brushing of your teeth or horizontal brushing of your teeth similar to the causes that i spoke about in abrasion under abrasion what is the cause behind abrasion is either you're brushing but in an incorrect way or either you're not brushing at all this will also lead to receding gums gingival inflammation also, if we have basically buildup of calculus, buildup of calculus around the tooth, and when you remove the calculus, when you remove the calculus, you will see that your gums are receding. And that's why basically, like after you do scaling, or the your doctor do scaling for you, or the dentist do scaling for you, you will tend to have hypersensitivity because you remove the calculus, and now the roots are exposed, so that's why you end up having hypersensitivity after scaling is done for you. Now, in class one, Miller's classification, there is a marginal tissue recession that does not extend to the mucogingival junction. Now, you might ask me, what is the mucogingival junction? You can see in the picture, there is a uh, light gray and dark gray what do i mean by light gray and dark gray that you can see in the picture between them is the mucogingival junction i will show you a picture in a couple of minutes so as you can see the dotted line the down one not the up the dotted line is the mucogingival junction that is located uh, which is a junction that is located between the attached gingiva and the alveolar mucosa or in other words between the light pink and the dark pink of your gingiva, we will have a line between them. This is referred to as the mucogingival junction. So if you have basically, if you see your gums are receding and it does not extend beyond the dotted line or also referred to as the mucogingival junction, this is a class one. Immediately you will know that this is class one Miller classification. Now what about class two? Class two, it extends beyond the mucogingival junction. It extends beyond but there is no bone or soft tissue loss all teeth are intact only one tooth basically there it extends beyond so that's what i mean by there is no bone or soft tissue loss when you have bone or soft tissue loss 
you will see multiple teeth are affected. Okay, because the bone is continuous, of course, not like you have uh, a different bone, like bone for the central and bone for the lateral. No, of course, it's continuous. Whereas class three, it also extends beyond the mucogingival junction, and there is a mild soft tissue and bone loss, as you can see in the picture. Multiple teeth are affected. Because multiple teeth are affected, so multiple teeth have receding gums, and one tooth basically is extending beyond the mucogingival junction, so that is a definitely class 3 Miller classification. What about class 4? Class 4 extends beyond the mucogingival junction, and there is severe bone and soft tissue loss. Like you can see, the tooth neighboring to the one that had the class 4 also is having class four so it is two teeth basically are involved with the class four not only one tooth like in class three you can see two teeth they extend beyond the mucogenoma junction and there is severe bone and soft tissue loss exposing them both together so both are exposed at the same time and because both basically are exposed this will lead to immediately whenever you eat something the food will will become impacted so let's repeat again class one as you can see it does not extend beyond the mucogingival junction and there is no bone or soft tissue loss class two you can see it extends beyond the mucogingival junction but there is no bone or soft tissue loss in which all teeth are intact only one tooth has a recession class three it extends beyond the mucogingival junction and there is a mild bone or soft tissue loss you can see that not only one tooth is involved you can see multiple teeth they have receding gums okay but the the degree of uh, receding is it's mild it's not too much that's why it's called mild bone and soft tissue loss in comparison with class four in class four you can see there, it extends beyond the mucogingival junction and there is severe bone and soft tissue loss in which more than one tooth is involved. You can see that all these four teeth in the picture are involved. They have receding gums and they all have class four. Now, what is the common complaint that the patient with receding gum will complain of? He will tell you that whenever I drink, cold things i feel pain whenever i drink cold things i feel pain and this is referred to as hypersensitivity hypersensitivity why happening due to exposed root we have a receding gum the gum basically that is covering up the tooth is no longer there the root has become exposed so that's why you will have sensitivity to cold things whenever you drink cold things now regarding the treatment options that we have because class one and two there is no bone or soft tissue loss only we have receding gums so just we need to cover up the root so we need to you need to go to a periodontist and he will plan a treatment for you regarding class three and four because there is a bone and soft tissue loss so what you need to do in this case more advanced procedures which is flap repositioning or free gingival graft and over in order to cover up basically the exposed roots not only that basically to cover up basically the loss that happens with which is the bone or and soft tissue loss now here is a note to remember once you have receding gums it can never return back to normal your gums can never return back to normal but sometimes gingival massage helps for mild cases so if you have like class one recession as i saw you as i show you showed you a picture uh, if you have a class one recession so it is uh, it does not extend beyond the mucogingival junction and there's no bone or soft tissue loss and it is a mild basically receding gum so sometimes basically you can do gingival, gingival massage okay by using uh, a brush or by your hand by your finger by your finger basically uh, massage it okay back and forth back and forth a little bit it, it sometimes helps in mild cases also in addition to that you can uh, 
do gingival massage not only like with your finger you can add basically uh, toothpaste as well because the toothpaste it contains potassium nitrate potassium nitrate helps basically to control any hypersensitivity you have so if you have basically hypersensitivity due to receding gum you can use basically a toothpaste apply basically a toothpaste all over your receding gum okay keep it for one minute and then uh, uh, spit it without water spit it off without water it helps basically to soothe the hypersensitivity that you have so that is good to know very important that you need to avoid aggressive tooth brushing as you can see in the picture this patient she is brushing very hard brushing very hard it will not have an effect on the uh, calculus that you will not be able to remove the calculus with uh, such an aggressive tooth brushing instead you will only harm your gum and as i said you will end up having receding gums and if you have receding gum you will complete of hypersensitivity and it is a reversible uh, condition as well so make sure to not brush very hard aggressive tooth brushing it will not do any uh, good to you it will only harm you rather than benefit you so this is the correct way for brushing of your teeth. You need to align your toothbrush at 45 degree angulation, as you can see in the picture, up to down, up to down, little bit, and not aggressive, slowly, slowly, up to down, up to down for one minute, brushing all, all, all of your teeth, 30 seconds in each quadrant, okay? using a fluoridated toothpaste, which is Sensodyne, I recommend. Sensodyne or, or Parodontex. This, these are the types of uh, toothpaste that I recommend for you to use. So this is the correct way to align your toothbrush. It's very important to align it in a correct way, 45 degree angulation, up to down basically, brushing motion, just to sweep off the plaque, to remove the plaque basically, from up to down, from the cervical to the apex. And that's it.